Okay, Leslie and Kamari, here's a poetry lesson for today. Um, I know, Leslie, you said you don't have this book. Are you ready to write in a notebook the things that you need to do? Um, throughout the video, maybe you'll just want to pause the video and take the time to write the things you need to write in your notebook. Um, Kamari, make sure you have this no this uh, poetry journal, right? Poetry journal. And let's start by reading this poem. And this is called Fog by Carl Sandburg. The fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over a harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. Let me read that one more time. The fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. Okay. Harbor is like a water that's right next to the city. You know, like if a city's by the ocean or a river and there's water right by the city, that's a harbor. And I want you to know something that the fog is being compared to something. Think about what it's being compared to. All right. We're talking today about extended metaphors. You know, I'm, we've talked about metaphors before. It's when you like compare one thing to another, not literally, but figuratively. Like if I was to say in my classroom, my classroom is like a, my classroom is a zoo full of crazy people. Well, that, it's not literally a zoo full of animals and my kids aren't literally crazy, but let's just say a lot of my kids act really wild, you know, and out of control. So that might, you know, a good con comparison is that it's like a zoo. So that's the type of metaphor we're talking about. So what we're going to work on today is a poem where you make your own metaphor like that. Let's think about this poem, Fog, by Carl Sandburg. He's comparing his metaphor. He compares the fog to a cat, right? So let, and uh, don't worry about writing this down. Just take a look at what I wrote, if you can even read it. I'm sorry it's so sloppy. Let's think about some of the words in the poem, like it. It said it comes in on little cat feet. Well, a cat, you know, walks very silently. You know, a cat could walk up and you wouldn't even notice it because it's so silent. Well, it's kind of like fog. Fog's just there. It doesn't make any noise. You don't really see it coming. And then it's just there, right? And then it's just there and it makes no noise. And also said that the, let's look at it here. It sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches. And when the cat's on its haunches, that means it's crouched down low to the ground. So that's what it means. You know, it sits still, low to the ground, not making much noise. And that's kind of like fog. Fog just sits there low to the ground, right? It's not really looking at anything, but it's just sitting there low to the ground, not really moving. And then look at this last part. And then moves on. You know, a cat, when it's decided it's tired of sitting in one place, it will just get up and move away. A lot of times you won't even realize it's gone until you look again. So the cat could decide to leave. And that's like the fog. When the fog clears off, you just kind of, all of a sudden you look up and like, oh, the fog's gone. You don't even realize it was leaving, but then it's just gone. So you can see how a fog is very much like a cat, right? In the way it's silent, it shows up silently. And then next thing you know, it's just gone without making any fuss or noise, kind of like a cat, right? So what you're doing today, you're going to write your own poem with an extended metaphor, and you're going to pick one type of weather. So from this word in the word banks below, you're going to pick a kind of weather you want to describe in a poem. So you get a choice. So I chose snow. So what I want you to do is take a moment, pause this video if you need to, and decide which of these you want to choose. I'll make it a little bigger. A breeze, clouds, a downpour, snow, a tornado, hail. A gust, hurricane, a sunshine, wind, lightning, rain, rainbow, thunder, or earthquake, any of those. So circle it, or if you don't have it in your notebook, Leslie, just write it down which one you want to do. And then look what it says. Write down at least five different things that describe the word you circled above. If you get stuck for ideas, you might think about what this kind of weather looks, sounds, or feels like. You might think about its shape, color, and way of moving. So as far as way of moving, I said scattered. You know, it kind of snow kind of just kind of goes all over the place, you know. 
as the wind blows it. And it's silent, you know, what it sounds like. It doesn't really make any noise. And also, say another way it moves, it's like fluttering, you know. It doesn't fall straight down. It kind of like, you know, flutters down because they're so light. What's it look like? Well, it's many little pieces and it's white. So those are the five things that I've thought of to describe my weather. And again, think about if you're stuck for ideas, think about what this kind of weather might look like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. You might think about shapes, colors, way of moving. You might not like for shape. I didn't write anything about shape. I didn't have anything about that. All right. So, and I have more than one for moving, scattered and fluttering. So it's just whatever comes to your mind. So take a moment, pause this. And uh, write down five things you could use to describe that. And then once you've done that, come on back to the video. Okay, next up, look here. It says, what animal would make a good metaphor for the word you circle above? What animal would be a good metaphor? Like remember in here, in Carl Sandburg's poem, the, for fog, the metaphor was a cat. Good metaphor for fog because like a cat, the fog just sits there. It shows up quietly and it leaves quietly like a cat. That's why fog's like a cat. So I said, I compared snow to moth, to moss. Moths, you know, are kind of like butterflies. That's what I chose, moth. And then look what this says. Remember that in an extended metaphor, you must make your comparison over more than one line in the poem. Write down at least three ways your animal is like the weather you circled above. So I said snow can flutter like moths. Snowflakes are small like moths. Snowflakes come in large groups like moths can. I don't think moths always come in large groups, but they can, like of the all around the light. So think about that. Choose an animal that you would compare your weather to, whatever you chose. Choose an animal. And then think about think about three ways that your weather is like that animal. It could be compared like in its movement, what it looks like, maybe what sounds it makes, all those things. Okay? Take a moment, pause if you need to, and do that. All right, hopefully you've chosen an animal that makes sense to you. And you think of three ways that the animal is like the weather you circled above. Circled above. Circled back here, right? Whatever type of weather you chose from this page. So let's go through it again. I chose snow. I'm comparing snow to a moth, to moths. And here's why, because the way it flutters, the way it's small, the way they can fly around in large groups, snowflakes can do that. And then, I just look at this note here. If you can't think of three things, maybe try a different animal. Maybe you chose, maybe the animal you chose wasn't the best choice. Maybe you should rethink about it. Think about this. When a writer's metaphor continues for more than one sentence of a story or more than one line of a poem, it's called an extended metaphor. So we're not just making one metaphor just in one line. This metaphor goes throughout the whole poem. So here's my poem. It's real simple. Tiny cold moths fluttering to the ground. Winter's tiny flyers, flying but making no sound. So that's mine. I don't know if I spelled flyer right. Is flyer spelled like that or is it with an I? I'm going to have to figure that out. And of course, I need to write it better so it can stink and read it. Flyer. All right. So, flyers. Tiny cold moths. Fluttering to the ground, winter's tiny flyers, flying but making no sound. So you see how I made my snow, I used the metaphor of moths to describe snow, the way it flutters around. And I, I hinted at that it's snow because I say winter's tiny flyers. You get the idea that it's snow. I never come right out and say that it's snow. You, you should be able to figure out that I'm talking about snow by my use of metaphors and, and other clues I put in the poem. If I've done a good job on my poem, the reader figures out that I'm writing about snow. All right. So if you finish with time remaining, while well, this doesn't really matter, look back over your work to make sure your metaphor extends for more than one line of the poem. 
Then think of one more way you could compare the animal to the weather and add that to your poem. You could if you wanted. I don't, I don't really want to. I think my poem's fine the way it is. I have a little bit of rhyme, ground, and sound. You don't have to have rhyme. At first, I wasn't planning on rhyme, but it just ended up, I saw a chance to make a rhyme, and I did it. So, all right. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, if you are having trouble understanding this, have a mom or, you know, give a text. I've been texting you guys all the time, so you should probably have my number. You could send me a text, say, if you don't understand or having trouble, and maybe I can make a more personalized video for you to help explain, all right? Or maybe we could just chat on the phone for a short time too. But at any rate, if you're having trouble, definitely reach out and try and get some help, okay? So, and there is a spot in Seesaw for you to turn in this poem. So I will be looking for that, all right? It'll say winter poems in Seesaw. That's where you need to turn it in. All right.